I'm just trying to switch right chain. So if I'm looking up, it's because my camera is on an angle right now and I have a monitor up there. So I'm still like work. So that's just working it on being eye level. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to keep it like, you know, you guys, it's about, we told Wendy as we were just, you know, going through it and preparing her for this, that um, you guys talk about whatever you want to talk mm -hmm. about. Wendy, you want to interview Diane on something that you're interested in really getting to know about her? Do that. Same thing with you, Diane. And and again, because it's like not that concept of a posh show, so people are not expecting this elegant show. Oh, it's so very natural and organic. Well, maybe yeah, I just jump in while we're live for a second and jump out or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. because you're saying it's not a show, it's not an it's mm -hmm. it's just an organic conversation that both you and and Wendy will be having okay. together, okay? Um, and and this is also about me, like, I don't know if you read everything on the page, but it also starts out with, um, this is about also me honoring, because I do a Facebook Live every day. It's part of my commitment. There's a whole story there if you're yeah. in reading yeah. it from Passion Projects. So this is how, in exchange for this being for free, um, because with full time, I don't need the promotion or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have over 700 guests in the studio. So this is something, it's a treat and a pleasure to do for Wendy because she's awesome. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, but, um, but this is also gets me, it's more fun to go live. As you guys probably know, if you've done a lot of Facebook Lives yourself, Dan, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but it's more fun to go live with someone and have a conversation and going live on your own timeline and yes. waiting for someone to connect. So this, even if it's like a second I'm live and I just connect with someone while they're live, I've honored my daily Facebook Live commitment. So that's All right. Oh, so okay. I guess she's off. So here we go. So I, I just want to thank you because it is my first time hosting or doing whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and and I uh, asked you because you, uh, I just find you a really neat person. And, uh, you know, I've done a couple of your courses and I think you're up to stuff like I am in the world. So I guess one of my questions to ask you is, what do you want to talk about? What what's what lights you up? Oh, uh, yeah. And we were discussing before just how I met you and I admire you as well and all that you have done um, and how we met with just talking about our families and how we had that in common. Yes, it. Uh, uh, just that alone, how it was not a coincidence, because I don't believe no. in coincidences. Uh, just that alone really lights me up. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, I learned about your daughter, and you learned about my daughter. And wow, it's amazing. Yeah. It really is. It really is. Yeah. And what else uh, is, um, I wrote a question down, what is your biggest pride and joy? Besides your kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my biggest pride and joy is really, um, if we're going to look at um, the business side, which turns out, I find, for me, being an entrepreneur, it's, it's an overall. It doesn't feel like just business. And I think you and I were discussing that as yeah. well, Wendy, how... Yeah how uh being an entrepreneur we don't even know whether it's saturday or sunday yeah. <laughs> and, and uh having the live your life now three-day event um live your life now and beyond uh has really really been my pride and and joy for what has come out of it for people and just some people just saying that it was the most um transformational experience they've ever had and and you know yourself sometimes you you feel like you're kind of alone you keep building and you keep uh, uh, building your products yeah you you don't really know how yeah. it's gonna land or are they gonna get some of the things that you received and mm -hmm. um, and just find finding this out and getting that just that 
one thing that gratification of just ah I never thought of it that way just yeah. that, those words oh they just they fire me up I love it when I say it and I love it when others say that it's like the aha moments I guess you can yeah. say yeah Do you I, believe that, I, that, I, I can't remember the exact aha moment because I get a lot of aha moments yes yeah. <laughs> but but I know it was really valuable that I, I was glad that you invited me to come and, um, you know, I listen differently. Yeah, I listen differently, you know. And, um, yeah, so, it, you know, what you do di is makes a difference, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. And, it, yeah, it was um, interesting, the friendships, too, that develop over there because you're working so close with each other. Yes. And, uh, and. It, it's, um, you know, it's tempting in the past to just give up and say, okay, like, why am I not just doing a nine to five job where I can yes. end it on that day at that time yeah. and just go. But, you know, that uh, making a difference, a bigger difference. I can believe, I believe that when you're working in a company and uh, as well, people make a difference being there. Oh, yeah. And it's huge. Yeah, people can. And yeah. That's it's not just all about that but for me i found it i found my purpose my passion with doing this and i just i just great and that's what i feel like with you with the two of us yeah i feel that we have we're on the same same page and yeah. Really, yeah yeah and same um you know out of uh so creating you'd been wanting to create a workshop for a while and are, are you, um, what else brings you joy in your life? Um, you know, I, I know um, for myself, it's not just my entrepreneurship, but it's the people I meet and mm -hmm. the, you know, I'm like, like I'm in the middle of writing a book and well, I've written it, but now I'm learning how to do the stuff I need yes. to do to put it out there. Um, and, um, you know, my life is pretty full and I know yours is. So mm -hmm. what fulfills you in your life? What are you, I'm not even sure what to ask. Like, Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to say that I too am writing a book. I've been working on it for two years now. Oh, well, awesome. Maybe I can help you if you need any help. Yes, I would. <laughs> I would like some help with that. Um, it's, uh, it's called... Uh, well, it's love and trust. It's all about love and trust, but it's not necessarily about just the love and trust um, outside, mm -hmm. but internal love and trust. Yes. Like, and, do you need internal love and trust, like our own love and trust of ourselves? Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. So the internal, internal uh, feeling, the emotion. Yes. of loving and trusting knowing that uh even having this conversation with you live right now yeah <laughs> loving and trusting the organic part of it and and allowing it to unfold and not to hold on to any uh fears or or um any kind of emotions that that won't allow the truth to come out and the trust to come out oh very good yeah and it, yeah there's there's so much involved in that and i for me it is the base it's it's really starts from there it's almost like the fertilizer yes in, in the growth in the ground uh so even right driving on a scary road <laughs> we driving and i was with a friend and and it was slippery a uh, little had a little bit of snow on the ground and and uh she was gripping the <laughs> steering wheel so tightly and just grinding her teeth and and i was just loving and trusting and so i just said love and trust and she was just you could just see this light this lightness on her just those two words uh just kind of set her into that uh, emotional state of just loving and trusting so that is what inspired me to create this book. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. 
So many people think, oh, love and trust. Oh, you're talking about couples or you're thinking many people. In our line of work, I know that we're, we know that it's an internal thing that we need to feel. Yes. As well. But um, when I tell people that I'm writing a book and it's about love and trust, oh, it's a couple, it's a romance. Not necessarily. No. <laughs> Well, I, I totally get what you're talking about. Um, the lady that's uh, coaching me on, uh, like I had totally written my book. It was finished over a year ago, but I I just uh, wasn't sure how to promote it or w what the next steps were. And so I hired someone recently and, and she said I had to put a couple of things like the book. It's uh, I've already got five endorsements from uh, yeah. well-known people. But she said I needed to put a prologue and I needed to do certain things. So I've been working on that. And when you talk about love and trust, I um, I get emotional. But I I, I start I start the prologue with uh, around that with my mom. You know, mm -hmm. I, ha I hadn't been raised with my mom since I was two. And uh, the breakthrough I had in my 20s uh, about uh, learning how to let love in, even you know, trusting myself and, um, you know, my mom was a, a an alcoholic and, and died an alcoholic, um, never, never recovered. And so um, I start my book with that, like, because cause what altered my whole life, and I got tears in my eyes right now, was that when mm -hmm. I learned to let her love in, regardless whether she drank or not, my, my whole world shifted. You know, and so, and learning to trust myself, like, and, and I still have, you know, I'm in my 60s, and I still have moments where I self-doubt myself. Um, the only difference is that I'm, uh, I have structures, like, when I call, say structures, people around me that I, like, I could pick up the phone and call you. I could pick up, you know, and within minutes, I wouldn't be self-doubting myself because the, 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 the people that are important to me are people who uh, they're they're up to stuff too so we know how to support each other listen and get us back on track quickly right and um, yeah so thank you for sharing that yeah well, as you can excited. see those two words are really uh, <laughs> can really really bring in yeah what's your emotion. passion Diane what's your greatest passion my passion is really about actually just even just what happened just now. That just looking at uh, and feeling Wendy and and then also and <laughs> what is it? It's so I'm so passionate about it and the coincidence of it again because I I looked because my grandfather was a was an alcoholic and he was a very shy man and um, and the only way to get him out of his shell was to drink and then he uh, had to have that drink more than anything else it meant it gave him a lot and looking at these positive intentions again for behavior um, I I went through a process to really look at that. How did he pick my grandmother up and hold her over the railing and threaten her that if he didn't stop nagging her, or if she didn't stop nagging him about his drinking, that he would drop her over the railing. And so I looked at that as being a six-year-old child and and looked at her being held over there and just said, you know, grandma, please don't say another word and you'll be okay. So for many years, I really zipped it. I didn't say anything. I was afraid I would get choked up, like uh, just automatic dry throat as soon as I wanted to say something. So my passion really is about being vulnerable and sharing 
our story. It's, I'm, I'm passionate to hear about people's stories, how it's led them to where they are today. Um, and it moves me and it drives me and the why and, uh, I don't know if that answered the question because I could go on and on about passion, <laughs> but, that, but that is, it's a huge thing. There's something that stemmed from it. When I looked at my grandfather's positive intention for holding my grandmother over the railing, it really was about love and connection. He, he um, received love and connection through his drinking, I believe, um, because he was, so shy he couldn't talk but when he drank he was able to so it was actually something good that he was intending to get and when my grandmother was trying to stop him because prior he had just fallen down the stairs had blood pouring out of the top of his head and um watching him climb back up and have another drink um i was thinking what can be positive about this but when I looked at it and it was just about love and connection, um, I'm very passionate about positive intentions. And, and where do you learn about positive intentions? Like you teach that. So what do you? Yeah, it's one of the things that that uh, when you do look into new linguistic programming, they talk about always looking at the positive intention and being curious. Uh, and that everyone has a positive intention, even though the behavior doesn't match the intention. Like you were mentioning before we came became live, you mentioned um, about your your granddaughter. Yeah, hiding, hiding, right? Like that behavior is unacceptable, and it can make us very upset with. For biting us, <laughs> whether they're child or whatever. Yeah. Uh, however, looking at that positive intention and hoping to get another behavior for getting the same yeah. intention. So, my grandfather drinking in order to get love and connection to be able to talk. Is there a way we can? work with him just he's not even alive anymore he drove around actually drinking um but what if you look at that story what could we have maybe worked through to have him get love and connection without having the behavior of drinking too much is possible yeah and looking at the possibilities that one of the things that I love about you and and I probably love about myself is that, you know, traumatic things happen, but we tend, we get curious and we see a positive out of it. And, and I, I, I just love that about you. And, and I love it about myself too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I wouldn't have been able to say that, you know, even 20 years ago, I couldn't have told you I love myself. Um, but today I do. And uh, and and it's pretty cool. So thank you for sharing that. It's a, a a powerful powerful story. There's there's something else you you you, you when when um, I was telling you about Samina and eleven eleven. There was something you that that triggered for you, and you said, "Oh, I love eleven eleven or something." What's that? <laughs> okay, uh, so it started with. Uh, when I met my husband, we would notice always on the clock, all these great things that would be happening right at 11, 11. And we'd say, Oh, my gosh, look at the clock, or it'd be 111. And uh, this, this went on and on. And I, I lived in an apartment. And Bruce, my husband worked up north. And the apartment number was 311. <laughs> So he came over and we were, uh, I just finished work. I came home and I was getting out of my work clothes in the back room. And uh, he was sitting in the living room with my, with uh, my brother-in-law, his brother that came in from Edmonton. And the two of them are sitting chatting. And this couple walks through our door, my door, 
because my husband doesn't live there. He's my boyfriend at the time. Walks through my door with their baggage. And, and uh, we're in our early 20s. And this couple is probably in their 50s. And they, they uh, put their bags down. They go, hi, Bruce. Oh, nice to see you. Um, where's Marnie? I was like, Marnie? Like, <laughs> and that is my husband's ex. <laughs> this is my husband's ex parents walking through my apartment. Uh. Door. Okay. So he goes, and there's no way that these people would even know that I live here. Okay. So it turns out they go, well, this in this apartment number 311? Yeah. Well, Marnie lives in 311 across the courtyard. Oh. <laughs> with her boyfriend. So it is this ongoing 11 thing. So then we decided, you know what? This 11 is coming up so much. We're going to plan our wedding date. Let's look in the calendar and find a Saturday on the 11th. Oh, nice. And so it's been an ongoing, ongoing process. So August 11th, 1990, we got married just by choosing. That was the only Saturday that fell on the 11th. <laughs> it goes on and on. And uh, versus dad's birthday and 311. And yeah, just, and then I found out that there was more meaning to. Yes. Uh, yeah. That being on the right path and, and all of that. And then you asked me to be on this show and I was like, it's 11 or it's yeah. over 11, 11. I went, oh, really? <laughs> what does 11, 11 mean to you, Wendy? What does that number yeah. mean to you? I, it doesn't mean. You know the the thing that I think of uh, uh, um, is a sad thing about the you know the towers like uh, that was another yeah thing. you know so that's I, I other than that it doesn't have a lot of meaning to me <laughs> except for when I uh, uh, read about Samina uh, then it's like that that has another meaning now but um, that doesn't have a lot of meaning to me yeah. Well, yeah, and my daughter was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes on the same day that the 9-11. Uh, we're just driving to the hospital to learn how to give her insulin uh, on that day. Yeah. But, yeah, the 11, it's a, it's a, I believe it's an angel number as well. Is it? Oh, I better mm. do some studying on it. <laughs> <laughs> I I uh I believe in angels. I I uh every morning when I meditate, I ask my angels to come into my life and into certain people's lives, like my children's, and just remove whatever's in our way. Um, work with our other angels so that we get out of the way, whatever's in the way, so that we can all flourish. And um, you know, I I believe that all my life, because some of the you know, I went through some pretty traumatic things as a child and, and as an adult. And I really believe it, the angels have angels or God or whatever, like has been there to protect us and guide us. And um, yeah, yeah, I just believe that. <laughs> yes, I, uh, there's powers bigger than us, I believe. Too. Yeah, it's I was doing some energy work. Do you know Jill Fisher? She uh, she's in Tawas and anyways she's a um, angel therapist, a hypnotherapist, and works with uh, incredible woman, incredible integrity, integrity, and uh, and I found out I got really I had over over eighteen thousand some odd angels looking over me, and ever since I found that out, I'm like yeah. <laughs> 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 and and what lifted and this might sound really corny, but I've uh. I, I've often or frequently felt very alone in my life, um, even when there's people around. And when I uh, did that energy work and discovered that I had all those eight, I never, ever since then, I, and that was a few years ago, I never feel alone. Like I just, you know, I just never feel alone. It's like, oh, the angels are there. Like, not like I'm going to do something stupid, but it's like, wow. I, I, I never 
you know, I do lots of things alone and I, and, uh, but I don't feel alone anymore. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a wonderful feeling. I agree with you. Like just knowing that, um, oh man, if it was all just completely up to me without knowing that there are outside sources Forces. to yeah. give me downloads and yeah. so comforting to know that I don't have to come up with everything. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> it is. And I, I love the idea that uh, we can create friendships so that, uh, like uh, last night, uh, a, a friend was helping me uh, edit what I had written for the back cover because I had to change everything from the coaching. Friend, and I am I don't uh, trust my... Um, like I can speak and whatnot, but my writing, I, I'm not I, like I, I need support in like the uh, how to have it run smoothly or s say it smoothly. So I typed everything up and then she just went over it. And um, and uh, I, I'm discovering all this technical stuff that's neat, like on Google Docs. And you probably know this because you're a real techie person as uh, we could share the Google Doc. So I put it on Google google doc so that she could show me what she was doing and we could we were talking on the phone and then and it was so neat like we spent a couple hours just doing that and then she needed support in an area with a relative that she's been you know and i have you know i have my coaching getting unstuck so mm -hmm. um, she says can you coach me now and i said sure so we exchange for the exchange Aww. and then i coached her through and she was so happy that uh she was able to work through you know something that she was really stuck on so it was really cool actually so i just yeah. love your name for that that getting unstuck is just so so freeing <laughs> yes well i i find we we including myself there's times where i get stuck that's why i have structures like people i can reliably call on and um that's why i'm ongoingly doing courses and to learn other ways because i don't know about you diane but when the the more i expand the more challenges i have do you find that yes um yeah it's because if we well if i just stayed in my comfort zone and didn't move forward i wouldn't really have to get myself into any kind of failure <laughs> and also any kind of success yeah <laughs> it's uh it's yeah the more the more i climb the more i fall yeah yeah, yeah. but that's and, okay oh absolutely I absolutely feel. what has been your biggest challenge wendy that you don't mind sharing about with us oh <sighs> hmm that's a big question for me because there's been so many challenges, but maybe the, uh, the biggest challenge in the last 10 years or, uh, would be uh, to start my life over again. Um, leaving my, uh, former husband and, um, <clears throat> you know, he, I was left with very little money. Um, he, and, uh, and to learn to start over again. And I, I took him to Supreme Court. I had to learn how to do that. I had no money for a lawyer. And um, just, I guess that biggest challenge was that it, I could love myself and, um, and love him too. Like he was going through whatever he was going through. Um, and I guess what it taught me was that to have compassion even when people are not treating you well um but to get curious about like if i thought like him he totally mistrusted and chose some ways of being that weren't very supportive and but if i was thinking like him i might have done the same actions so to i guess the biggest challenge is not to take anything personal anything and um and i needed to uh have friends around me that could uh walk me through some of the 
feelings and emotions. It's not like not that I didn't have feelings and emotions, but that because um, I did, there was times where, you know, I wanted to wring a few people's necks. <laughs> but, but it was uh, learning to not hold on to that, uh, learning to deal with it moment by moment, letting it go and just moving forward and thrive. Yeah, that regardless of our circumstances,